Hi everyone, I am excited to show you a project that I've been working on. Uh, you'll be interested in it if you um, are a, I don't know, a computer buff type guy, I suppose. Uh, but it has to, well let me just bring up, let me just show you what it looks like and then maybe you can kind of figure out what I'm going, where I'm going with this. So we have a just a Python class and Python file open and you can see the first class inherits from the circuit based class and it's called not. So maybe you're starting to get an idea of the direction I'm going with this. I also have an AND gate, a exclusive OR gate, and a NOR gate. And you may be missing, maybe asking, well, where is uh, you know NAND and uh, some of the others? Well, I haven't, um, I just haven't gotten around to building them yet, and I haven't needed them yet for the next level up circuits. So, yeah, this is a uh, pure Python logic simulator, and it is designed to work, to to kind of just work, and to be very intuitive. Let me show you a little bit of what I mean. So what would it take to go from these nots and ands and nors to build, uh, say, a, a SR latch? This is the first uh, more complex circuit that I tried to build. And to my utter excitement, and surprise that when I simply sat down and typed out kind of a behavior of how I wanted it to work and just sort of gave it, you know, ran it for the first time, it actually worked. Like, no joke, it worked the first time. So that's always very exciting when you have a computer model that makes it very easy to build things that, uh, build them in the same way that you would build them in the real world. Let me bring up a picture of an SR latch real quick. So it's a it's very um, intriguing sort of feedback mechanism where the output of, of the top one goes to an input of the bottom and that's literally how I built it. The output of the top is connected to the input A of the first and yeah and then we just expose the S and R as um, those are actually wires that are exposed to whatever you know the instance of an SR latch. And I decided, well, I made it as far as an SR latch. It's working beautifully, so why not build something more complex? So I made a gated SR latch, which just gates the input with some AND gates. And also uses a... no, it doesn't use a knot. Okay. And that worked great, so I moved up to a D-type latch. And this worked just fine. I did have to uh, drive the data and enable pins and kind of um, get it to set the initial state correctly and then after that uh, the D-type latch worked fine and then I built a D-type flip-flop let me bring up, here's a D-type latch which is um, just a, sort of an evolution of the SR latch and I'm, I'm doing this with NOR gates and it's actually built just like this image so then once you have a working D-type latch, you can build a uh, D-type flip-flop, which of course captures just a rising or falling edge. Now this is where things uh, started to get interesting. The D-type latch works just fine, but when I tried to, to put it into toggle mode, that's when you connect the data line to the complementary output Q0 so that at each clock tick the data will um, end up toggling and the, the output will toggle. It did not work and I eventually discovered that it's because uh, part of how a D-type flip-flop works is it relies on the fact that it takes a signal a little bit longer to make it if just like 10, 10 nanoseconds longer for the clock signal to reach the second flip-flop than it does to reach the first flip-flop and so it happens so that they are just in the right state you know, one of them's enabled the other's disabled so it's at just exactly the right time so that the signal can get through and um, 
it's actually kind of amazing how the dtype flip-flop works. Now, of course, in Python, when you set a variable to change from true to false or false to true, there's not like a you know a 10 nanosecond extra you know delay. Uh, we don't really have that that um, dynamic of the rise and fall times. So that's why it didn't work. I messed around with it uh, for a while. Let me bring up the actually put it in the counter. Um, because and I called it a toggle flop, so I don't think this is what an electrical engineer would normally call this. But I think that a toggle flop is the perfect name. It's a, just a flip flop in toggle mode. That's what it does. So my first approach was actually to use a <clears throat> AND gate that um, went in between the complementary output and the data and the um, it was kind of controlled by by the, the second pin from the master's enable. So the idea was, you know, to only pass through the data from the Q naught if the master was in the right state. It was ready for it. And this got me closer. It, it worked for one clock cycle, but it didn't work for the second clock cycle or the third. So that's kind of frustrating. I tried it with um, a NOR gate which actually was exactly the same and SR latch also did the same thing and then I tried a D-type latch just kind of trial and error um, where the, the data of the D-type latch is Q0 and the enable is driven by the master's enable pin and you can see how just easy to read like this stuff is um, it's it's very like natural it's cool Anyway, we connect the Q of the D-type latch. The, out, uh, the um, primary output goes to our data pin on the toggle flop. And when I ran this, it actually worked. Uh, so because of that, I uh, was able to compose four toggle flops into a up ripple counter in like so. And very simply done, simply connect the clock of a toggle flop to the Q naught of the one before it and you have an up counter. I mean that's here like I don't even have to put them in toggle mode there because they're already toggle flops. So this is um, I mean I, I feel like I did no work and it's already working. So demo time I guess. Let me bring up the test that we'll be watching. So this will be test counter. So when I first run it, um, you won't get any interesting output because all the tests pass. So we actually have to make the test up ripple counter. Okay. Um, we actually have to make this thing. Oh, oh, that's interesting. So I had a little issue there because I was trying to save a file that was on uh, another account on my machine and it wouldn't let me. So I had to log in and fix it. Um, but we've got it now. So I just ran. Well, let me run it again. It says one failed, which is what we expected. And let's zoom in on this because this is beautiful. I told it to count from... 0 to 10 and let's see what it's doing. So it actually looks like it went to 8 first which would be wrong except that the way it's programmed I put the least significant bit at index 0 in the array and so this is actually binary 1 and this is binary 0 1 which is in fact 2. This was 3 and then 4 and then 5 uh, six, seven, eight, nine, and that is in fact ten. So very exciting because I did not like program this counter to work the way it does. I actually it would be more proper to say that I constructed it uh, or built it to work the way it does, and I did so according to you know data sheets and how they actually work in the real world. Um, 
I what I really like about this model is that it is uh, kind of reactive and by that I mean if you drive a pin on an input of some circuit all the outputs automatically change like you don't have to run some okay I just changed stuff go ahead and compute everything function it will automatically calculate the outputs as soon as you change an input which so that's um, it anytime you can make a computer model work more like the real world it's less to think about so yes, I'm very excited with the uh, potentials for this project. I've already started working on some other interesting uh, things. For example, I made a, a um, half adder, and then I made a full adder, and then I changed together eight of them to build a 8-bit adder. And I was able to take two numbers like 7 and 1, and then load up register A and register B, um, with those numbers and then in the output you can see 0001 which is in fact 8 and I know that those are fairly small numbers and maybe I should test it with bigger numbers since it should be capable of adding anything from 256 to 256 uh, but this, I mean it works so I, I don't doubt that it will um, and if you want to see the, the code for that I think it's in, uh, no, it's in, like, Adder. Okay, the 8-bit Adder is literally, you can see it right there. There's your 8 full Adders. So, like, there's, it's so easy to read these circuits. Like, oh, my goodness. Uh, and here's a bunch of exclusive OR gates that I need to build this. And uh, here's a, the add sub slash subtract wire. This circuit will actually do addition and subtraction, and you know you you don't feel like you're cheating at all when you're because I certainly am using Python. I probably could cheat to get it the circuits to work the way I want, but I don't have to. They already work. Uh, it's amazing, and um, so and you can even see um I don't know where this is going to go, but this says ALU. 8085, which of course would be one of the first Intel processors, and I'm toying around with building. Uh, since I've gotten this far with counters and latches and and even some arithmetic, you know, one one potential goal would be to build a, a very simple implementation of a microprocessor in this simulator, and then um, we'll just imagine if you could at some point implement the at mega 328p the arduino and write some c code and you know compile it and deploy it on the simulator and then you have the huge advantage of you know to the utmost level complete debugging power because now you know any wire that's used in any circuit it could be it could be in a, in a timer two or <clears throat> in one of the ADCs or something, you know, just any wire that exists in the circuit in, in a real Arduino will also exist in this Python simulator because it will be a one for one exact replica. And you'd be able to, you know, hook up a virtual LED and monitor the state of what it's doing. In fact, that's one of the ways that I test, I, I of course have pi tests and I write these tests and I use a cert and that's the most solid way. But if I just want to play with a circuit, I made myself a little virtual LED and you, know, you, you simply connect, you know, if I had some, let's say I had an AND gate and I could connect the output of the AND gate to an LED and I just give it a label like my LED and anytime the output changes then that it'll print a message on a screen that it changed and like that's pretty intuitive that's pretty easy Wow so as you can tell I'm pretty excited about this project it's not on github at the moment though it could be so I'm really just looking for uh, feedback um, people are interested in seeing this taken to another level and um, 
I mean, if nothing else, I hope that you have enjoyed or have some appreciation of, you know, the, the counting demo and just, you know, have, have just generally enjoyed the video. But if you're interested in seeing where this can go or wondering about its potential, you know, hey, maybe this has already been done 10 times. I, I feel like it hasn't. Um, I nothing else. I've had a lot of fun building it and uh, it's actually very fun to use because of how easy it is to read the read the circuits and build them um, I I think that this project is already a success so thank you for watching happy to hear your comments or whatever um, so see you next time